Oh, I think I forgot to put deodorant on. One second. All right, I'm back. All is good. Deodorant is on and I should smell like coconut or at least my armpits should. Welcome to part two. I was going to try and do this all in one part, but I got sick of editing it because it was taking a really long time. So I wanted to get at least some of it up for you. So here we go for part two. Oh my God. Oh my God. Yeah, it's, just, it's just for safety reasons. But yeah, for safety you know, reasons. It's so sad. Who's safety? It's, just, it's so safety? sad. You can know how sickened I've been by this. So oh sickened. Oh my goodness. The first two months I was like, I couldn't eat for the first three days. I first guess. three days. I just couldn't even eat. I was so <sighs> like disturbed greatly and i've been in touch with melanie that her niece that got kind of got involved i've been trying to call her and help her and she's just really jacked up she's really jacked up and melanie don't don't no mm -mm. don't use those terms it's it, it no mm -mm. let's stay away from slang uh you're you're not a person that can pull that off jacked up jackie mm -mm. I know they exhumed his wife's body. Did they find out it was foul play with her, too? Uh, I don't know that mm. information yet. Okay. Yeah, he didn't tell me. Mm. I, tried not, I tried not to ask. I mean, I'm not super nosy person. Okay. You're not nosy. Okay, well, this is the one type of situation you should have been nosy. Uh, and also, I personally believe that when you become a member of the Relief Society, you develop a, another spiritual gift called Can't Mind Your Own Fucking Business, Citus. Person, so I try not to ask him too many questions right. that might be uncomfortable. I could have asked, I should have, but I didn't. Um, yeah. But I just told him, I said, you know, that he's talking to like people on the phone every day, right? Like, you know, he's oh talking to most people in LDS about it. He goes, oh yeah, we're very aware of it. Yeah. So well. he's around, if he's calling people, he's around. Mm -hmm. I mean, they didn't leave the country or anything, right? They could have gone to Hawaii. Hawaii, oh brother, yeah. Because she loves Hawaii, so they could be in Hawaii. Wow. Did yeah. the police know that? Yeah. Oh yeah. Oh good. Yeah. Well, well, first off, and foremost, nobody gets revelation through somebody else. Anybody that's ordaining anybody exactly. anything, that's baloney. Yeah, exactly. I mean, you know, you're way off base if you're letting somebody say that you're. Uh, oh my gosh, that just makes me want to vomit. Me too. Me too. She's right on the money. I know. It's sad. You know, everybody, you know, Chad was such a nice guy. He was a nice guy. No, he wasn't a nice guy. He was good at pretending to be a nice guy. There's a difference. No. Now, I had someone make a comment that say that they had met him and they truly believe it's mental illness, but I don't like it when criminal behavior is compared to mental illness. Most people with mental illness are not fucking criminals and they certainly aren't goddamn violent like these people. You'll see me push back when people use terms like schizophrenic, unless they are talking about their own experience because we have a habit of using that word when it's not accurate and the stigma that people with schizophrenia suffer is enough. That's just my little lecture on mental health. And I appreciate you coming to my TED talk. Okay. Oh man. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Wow. Mm -hmm. Wow. So I, I yep. felt like the adversaries always tried I know. to, yeah, always had it in with me, always tried to, I know. you know, but I, I've learned from it. It's, it's, if you, man, you, somebody needs to write a book about this, not specifically specifics, but to let people know they're all deceived, man. Don't worry. Books are being written. Mm -hmm. they, they're so all much deception. Yeah. Yep. yeah. So much deception. So much deception. And it's so easy to be so taken much. out, to taken off. Uh -huh. That's why. Oh yeah, because yeah, you're trusting. They usually go after people that are very trusting. Exactly. Exactly. Uh -huh. yeah, because them. yeah, because the air is thick with fecal matter. They think that the basics is so boring, but that's the safety uh -huh. is in the basics. Yes, it is. And All the Lord this... will teach you Himself. Exactly. Oh my goodness. Uh -huh. Exactly. I've learned how to understand and and get knowledge for myself, and I thought. It is the most neatest thing in the world to start being able to receive knowledge for myself. And mm. Mike Stroud was trying so bad to, just to force feed people with spiritualism. Yeah. And yeah. I thought it was really cool at first until he was excommunicated. Yeah, the whole spiritualism, again, like I said, 
I can connect just about everything, a lot of it, very loosely in some cases, very, very loosely in some cases. But people don't really need a lot to go crazy with the doctrine and then to convince other people that they are manifesting some bullshit gift. And he's like, you know, the general authorities don't know why they don't talk about these things and all this stuff. I know why. Look at what happens. This has been telling people, as I've been sharing a lot with my friends and telling them they've been shocked. Uh, I'm going to guess Melanie has shared a lot with a lot of people. And she she is not, I, I mean, when she said Lori was not smart, I think someone needs to look in the mirror because... Good Lord, you know you're up to your neck in a murder, in, in multiple murders, and in my opinion, being uh, an enabler. And then you're like, this is the greatest gossip ever. I'm going to be so popular when I go to Relief Society on Sunday. I'm just going to blah, 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 blah. Not smart, no. Not smart. You know, because they know Chad. A lot of them know Chad personally, and and uh, I said, you know, and, and Mike Strauss, said he's pride. It's just prideful. It's all prideful. We want, we want, we want. How many times is Melanie going to say prideful? Prideful, prideful, prideful. We get it. And exactly. Then, and that's when the adversary comes after us. So we have to be so careful. And you know, the Lord is teaching me like all about pride through all of this, late. and how just to just just. Anyway, I did have a dream that warned me about deceptions, and it was a lion chasing me in my dreams. Wow. And I came to understand it through other people. She consulted dreamdictionary.com. So my, my weakness is that I love and have, so I, because I have such a love for people. Really? That, you show it in an interesting way. Because I have such a love of people and, you know, I pretty much don't hold myself accountable for anything and really only protect myself and nobody else and and blabbing about this case all over and but you have a love for people good and i want to help people it's my nature i help people too much i don't think it's your nature i think your nature is to help melanie that's what i think get to the point where i'd leave the tree of life to partake of the fruit and i'd leave it and go try to get people to come back to the tree of life and we saw this the same type of language used by Lori. You know, oh, I help people too much. I'm so fucking perfect. I shit gold and diamonds. She's bragging. And, and like, it makes me want to puke. And that's where my sin is, is. I'm leaving the tree of life to go help people that are off and down the ditches. You know? Her sin is that she wants to help people. Let's just take that in. That's her sin. Her big downfall is that she wants to help people. Narcissistic. 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 I'm not diagnosing her. I'm just saying that her behavior is a little narcissistic. And uh, she's full of herself, man. She is full of herself. Right. And Lehi never left the tree. Exactly. Exactly. Stay. Yes. I don't know why she's got to bring Lehi into this. Hey, Future Jen here. So I'm going to tell you the story about the Tree of Life and Lehi so you understand what the hell Melanie is saying. Lehi was Nephi's father and Nephi wrote this in Nephi 8. So Lehi had this dream and remember there's Nephi, of course, he's like the star, the golden child, the favorite. And then Sam is his younger brother, his older brothers were Laman and Lemuel. So he has this dream, it's full of symbolism. I'm just gonna give you the general gist. So this tree has a bunch of fruit on it and people that are righteous, like Nephi, are taking the fruit. But Laman and Lemuel, they didn't want any of that shit. So this concerned Lehi, of course. But according to Lehi, he was super excited that Nephi and Sam partook of this fruit because they and many of their seed would be saved. I really, seed is another one of those words. 
And Layman and Lemuel, on the other hand, they were in like this dark forest. And then some guy in white shows up and is like, follow me. So Lehi says, sure. And he goes through some really scary forest and he's nervous and he asks the Lord to have mercy on him. And then he arrives at this field with this tree. It doesn't say what kind of tree it is. A maple tree, maybe? I don't know. But I guess that doesn't really matter. So he walks over to the tree and sees all the fruit on it. And it's white. Get it? And takes a bite. Partakes of it. He likes it. It's the best kind of fruit he's ever tasted. I don't know why white fruit just seems like it wouldn't be that tasty, but it's Lehi's drink. And he was filled with joy when he took this fruit. So he wanted his family to partake of it too. Maybe it was a special kind of fruit. Know what I mean? He looks over, he sees Nephi, Sam, Sariah, and tells them to take some of the fruit. And then he sees Laman and Lemuel, and they're like, no, we're not interested. He was kind of bummed at that. And the tree, of course, is symbolic of the Savior, if you didn't catch that symbolism. Like I said, there's a lot that we don't have time to go over. Lehi talks about partaking of this fruit several times. He seems a little obsessed with it, but whatever floats your boat, especially if it's that special kind of fruit. Know what I mean? Then he notices this river and that symbolizes health. And actually, I'm not sure where it is in the scriptures or if it was just in a talk, but I remember learning about the fact that the water was controlled by the devil, which makes sense considering I was a competitive swimmer. I'll draw my own conclusion for that. Sounds about right. And then he notices that Nephi and Sam and Sariah are confused about where to go. This is said to mean that it is because even the righteous can get confused. And then he sees this rod and this path. I think it's supposed to symbolize the straight and narrow. And then there are four groups that pop up. The first group, they start to make their way towards the tree, but then they get lost. And there's some darkness that they get lost in, I guess. They're screwed. And then the second group, they make it further down the path in the first group. So progress. And they actually make it to the tree and partake of the fruit. So... I think that represents the gospel of Jesus Christ. But then some group of assholes came along and was making fun of them. They started pointing and laughing. So the group was like, well, that's embarrassing. So we're out. So they ended up getting lost too. And then the third group comes along and they do even better. Like they're learning from the mistakes of the first two groups. But they fall down a bunch on their way. They have a tough time. And so, you know, they barely make it there, but they make it there. So yay, and they get their fruit. Then the fourth group, they never even get on the path. They just wander around, they're completely lost and they represent people that never learn the gospel. And that's pretty much Lehi's dream. I guess the lesson is that Lehi, he was in the tree or around the tree, I guess. I don't think he could climb it because I'm pretty sure he was a little too old at this point, but he was super happy and there's joy at the tree and gospel. So when Melanie says that she keeps leaving the tree to help people, it means I'm so righteous and I just want to help people. So I'm going to leave the tree and see if I can find them. But clearly she didn't take a map or listen to directions. But she found her way back to the tree. Of course she did. So now she's learned her lesson and she She's just going to stick to the tree and hang out there, I guess. Mm -hmm. So the Lord gave me this cool, cool dream about this lion coming after me. And every time it was going to eat me and I'd always wake up with screaming. Well, I didn't scream, in the, you know, when I woke up, but I was, right. I'd go, ah, and then I wake up. So I started to figure out it was about helping people. And so it's a long story how I figured that out, but I know it's true. And um, of course she knows it's true. You know, it's okay. You know, maybe Melanie has no idea how the human brain works because she's a very rare case of a human that can survive without one. When this last portion happened where I cut my friends off and just said, you, you can't be a part of my life anymore, right. just by the way I handled them. Right. I had a dream that night about the lions again. This time the dream, the lion came after me. Instead of screaming and turn around, I turned and I said, just believe in him. Just believe in him. Just believe in him. And then I see Jesus Christ. And he oh. is standing there. And I walk towards him. And then he goes to the cave. And then I walk through the, through the cave to where he was. And then he goes to the exit where the door is. And it opens up and it's light coming out of it. Just oh. white light. We're going to Google that. We're going to see what lines and caves mean in dreams. And I wake up and I go, oh, my gosh. I can't, this, oh my gosh, I finally 
believed in Jesus Christ enough to, to cut these people off of my life. And this is what the dream was about. Well, mm-hmm. time goes by. I just like pulled up. I think it's Shreya Strollinger. I'll try and link it. What does a lion dream indicate? They indicate a powerful side of a person. They routinely show up in dreams. But when they do, they are communicating ideas and messages related to concepts such as courage. Nope. Protection of herself. Strength. No. Aggression. Definitely bottled up aggression. Fighting with lions means you could be driving yourself to self-destruction. Dreaming of a lion chasing you means you are struggling to control your anger and feelings of being a dimwit. To dream of a cave represents mental or emotional retreat, sanctuary, or a psychological safe haven. Nah. I mean, if hiding in a cave means retreating from responsibility, okay, yeah, I can see that. All right. I'm now realizing I am in the cave now. He was showing me the future. Sounds like she learned her lesson of looking for meaning in places where there is no meaning. Of this cave now. And this is a cave, but the good news is, is there's light at the end of the tunnel or the end of the cave. Absolutely. Yeah. And so I'm like, I can't believe he showed me already that. And it was, but the thing that troubles me or a lot, um, quite, like, I don't it's understand. Fucking is dream. I let, he led me through the cave. Like I followed him. It's, it's a dream. Okay. You know, I don't think she has learned her lesson because she's still searching for meaning in stuff that, I don't think it has any real meaning. Like, it's fun to Google your dreams and stuff, but I don't know if they're always right. I, I, I don't know. I don't profess to know. But I think Melanie searches for meaning in places where she has no business searching for meaning. Followed him into the cave. Wow. He didn't follow me. I followed him. I'm wow. like, did you want me to go through that wow. to help other people? Like, Okay, this is a perfect example of how this shit happens like she's saying how she's done with this and then now she's saying how all these things have meaning like make up your fucking mind oh as everything we go through is is yeah. everything go- turns for good everything is yeah. turned for good yeah, yeah. i i believe so you it's... will help people i think i bet you'll write another book because you will be able to help people because there's going to be yeah. people are so this People are just, I mean, they're going to be deceived in droves, you know? Oh, yeah. It's bad. And so it's getting so bad. And I've told everybody, no more groups. Right. No more groups. No more groups. And all my friends, I'm telling you, everybody that I talk to are like, oh, my gosh, I feel so sick. I need to repent. Everybody's repenting. Wow. Everybody's everybody's repenting. (laughs) That's good. It's so beautiful. It's so beautiful. Oh, Oh, my God. Are they having repenting parties? You invite everyone over and are like, we got to, we got to repent. Great. I'll bring the cheese. Oh, we got to repent. Oh, all right. All good. Like, it's kind of serious stuff you should take seriously. I don't know how because I was damn near perfect. No, just kidding. At least I went through this to, because they would have never repented had it not got to this level. Right. Right. If, it, if, they, if there was no deaths involved and, you know, right. they get crazy like this, nobody would have ever known. Right. It, it leads to bad things. Is she fucking serious? Is she fucking, like, thank God for innocent people being murdered so I could learn a fucking lesson? What is wrong with you? What is wrong? I just, ah, what is wrong with you? All of these things had to happen so you could learn a fucking lesson that you should have known to begin with? If you had paid attention to the scriptures and not been sniffing glue. And so, in a, in a way, Chad and Lori were a small, they were a blessing to many people to help them see how jacked up this is and how off they are. No, 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 no. I am not in, I'm in an alternate reality right now, right? I'm not, this is not earth. This is fucking, uh, I got to check and make sure nobody put drugs in my Diet Coke. Oh my God. Oh my God. 
hope that Julie Rowe at some point will come to the conclusion that she's off. I would love to talk to her. I have friends that know her personally, but I don't feel inclined to talk to her at all. Right. Um, just don't feel that. She's no. very strong-willed. And to another strong person like me, being a female, I don't think she'd like me very much. Probably not. You know? Right. And so, um, anyway, I'm good friends with one of her really close friends, and him and I are close friends, but I haven't talked to her since she, he's been really involved with her. I've kind of cut ties with him because he tells her everything, so oh, I didn't want him to know yeah. what's going on in my life. Well, now yeah, so knows. anyway, um, I've been humbled. I've been broken down. I mean, holy cow. Just, just not been fun. And Shit, that wasn't planned. But anyway, I feel peace now. The Lord... I did get, I did receive a blessing from a man who's a good man here locally. Good. His wife is amazing, and his children are just a beautiful family, and oh, he's good. a really good man. And I just said, hey, I need a blessing. I've got some heavy stuff going on in my life. I said, I don't have time to talk to you about it because you got a kid that's sick right now, and I can't. T- I don't have time to talk to you about it, but, yeah, I still need you to do something for me because, you know, I'm Melanie, and I am more important than your sick child. I just didn't have a chance to talk. Right. And he gave me a blessing, and he said, he didn't even know what was going on. He said, the Lord is telling you to go back to your core beliefs. Duh. I was like, oh, interesting. Interesting. I think yeah. that's called and predictable. Said, there were people that are going to be criticizing you, but you should not listen to them. You need to turn the cheek and go forward. Absolutely. And he, yeah, and he said, do not take a, you need to take a step back. And you need to heal. What does she have to heal from? That That's what I would like to know. Being a dumbass? What does she have to heal from? Someone please explain. Rest. And take care of your family. And um, go, you need to go read Moroni. I mean, First Vision. And, you know, I read the whole Joseph Smith history in the temple. And you know what Joseph Smith did? He said there was a great excitement in the land, and he did not engage in the great excitement. He decided to go to the Lord and ask the Lord himself. Well, he did, actually, because he created his own religion. So he did. See, I've never, mm-hmm. put, I've never put that two and two. I know that, but I've never I know, put... That's either. fantastic. That's fantastic. He oh, did not my get goodness. carried away with the excitement. He yes. decided to go to the Lord himself. I I would disagree with that. Now, again, as I always say, I really don't care. You can believe what you want to believe as long as you're not hurting anybody. But uh, I think a lot of people would say he did get carried away, especially when it came to justifying taking a young girl out of her home that wasn't an adult or actually more than one. Uh, yeah, I, I would say he got caught up in some things he shouldn't have. I'm like, wow. way to go, Joseph. You were true to us, Joseph. You exactly. Were true. Oh my goodness. You were true. I'm so thankful. A for little his boy, truth. such a young little boy. I know, and he knew. Kid. Oh my yeah. goodness. Oh, that's so I fantastic. Know. It's beautiful. It's wow. so beautiful. Cause I'm just, could someone just take this pen and just run in, just run? I mean, I just. Maybe if I run really fast and hit my head on the wall, this will make sense suddenly. I mean, this is basically a crash course on everything that's wrong with the Mormon church right here. And this is after she learned her lesson. Okay, let's just. Think about that for a minute. Don't expect you to, because my brain is certainly fried. Yeah, um, so, the, so anyway, the guy finished the blessing, and he goes, you know, I'm so sorry, and it's not me. I just, I'm so sorry, but I feel like the Lord was chastening you. And I said, yes, he has been. You're right. No, it's not you. It's me. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it's fucking you. <laughs> and he goes, I'm so sorry. I'm like, no, you're fine. Just, I know it's, you're right. I, yeah, I got, he goes, the Lord is very aware of the situation. I said, oh yeah, he's very aware. He was so in tune, wasn't he? Oh yeah. <laughs> so in tune with what the spirit was saying, whispering to him. He's a visionary man too. Oh, so, wow. so interesting. Oh, okay. So yeah, you've clearly learned your lesson. 
uh, by going to a man that's a visionary when you just finished telling her why that's not good. Do you listen to yourself? Do you hear yourself? Like when John Pryor was kind of giving you a hard time asking you about your memory, I was like, you know, that's not very nice, John. I understand now. I, wow, you have no, I mean, it's like common sense just skipped you right over or just any self-awareness or decency, really. I mean, oh my God, seriously, I'm going to need a cocktail after this. Or four. So now you're you're dating David. You said, yeah, and that's uh-huh. so wonderful. That's oh, it is. I've, oh. I've I've had a hard marriage for twenty five years, and the Lord told me last year you can leave now. I was like, oh, are you kidding me? I was so excited, I couldn't help but be joyful. <laughs> I feel I feel like I've been in prison for twenty five years. Oh, it's been man. horrible. And I was like, you know, I wrote the book and I did the change and I did all. Really, he made you stay for twenty five years. Just to, you know, be an asshole. Really? Also, David sounds like the life of the party, judging by the audio I've heard of him. I'm sure you two will be real happy together, unless you already got divorced. That There was no change in him. Like, I was like, come on, they don't change? Oh. <laughs> they don't change? I they change when you have a change of heart. No, they don't, Melanie. They don't necessarily change. A change is about you. It's not about anybody else. I'm like, oh. Yeah, but no, I'm good. I'm doing good, and Dave, David is amazing, and you know him and I are super compatible, and we oh, both are great. diehard missionaries. We're both overzealous. That's our problem. That's why we. Get. You know what? So we figured she this sucks. out. If you're overzealous, then you go too much beyond the mark, right? Um, and too excited about things of God, and then He was teaching us to bridle your passions. Oh yes. And I'm like, oh, we are so not bridling our passions when we get so excited about things. And the Lord was trying to teach us, you need to bridle your passions so that you will have love for your fellow man. And I'm like, oh, okay. <laughs> I, didn't get the, I didn't get that memo. Yeah, I just, always, I just always ignored that one. Yeah, like, whatever. Clearly. <laughs> oh. Mm-hmm. oh. <laughs> yeah, so just remember when you really want something bad to make sure it's what the Lord wants. I want the last two hours of my life back, please. And I think the Lord wants that for me too, but it's too late. And I had to listen to your dumb ass. And I think you owe me an apology. I do. I really do. Just don't listen to people anymore that tell you about the future. unless. So don't listen to your boyfriend at all. Cause pretty sure the future is like his thing. You know, like it's a personal one on one conversation or something like that. Never mind. You know, um, even then, you know, it's you gotta get your own revelation. Absolutely. And I'm done. I threw Chad's books away, I just chucked them in the garbage can. Yeah, I never bought any of them, so. Oh, good. Yeah. I, you know, I said to the police officer, I said, you know, for being a visionary, ma'am, he sure didn't see this coming, did he? <laughs> <laughs> okay. I don't think you did either. He goes, no, you're right. He didn't see this coming. I'm like, yeah, exactly. Well, I, I, I read too that he was excommunicated from the church too. That he said he was a prophet and he was excommunicated from the church. Is that true? I don't know about that. I don't know. Oh, I don't wow. know. That was along with all be. the police stuff. It said that he yeah. was. Yeah, I don't know. Okay. Huh. Yeah, I tried to talk I'm to so his bishop, and, and um, but he just He's moved wards when he married Lori, so he moved so quickly oh, my that goodness. the bishop never met him. Yeah, he never mm. met him. Also, even if you ask the bishop about another member's excommunication or withdrawal of membership privileges, that bishop is not to talk to you about it. So they wouldn't share that information if they had it unless they were breaking policy. It's sad. I don't think the kids are alive. It's sad. Uh, well, if, the, if they're not, then they're they're okay. You know what I mean? The Lord's the Lord's. The Savior them. took I mean, them. Yes, He took them up because, like the little children that were sacrificed, the Savior's right there taking them. He's right there. Oh, yeah, He's I right do right do believe that. Yeah. I do believe that. So they will. They're they're okay. They are. It's just sad, you know. And it, I think, well, the next is. life they got so, they got repenting to do, True. and yeah. 
they got to make it right. They mm-hmm. got to they got to get everybody to forgive them on the other side of the veil. Oh yeah, I mean you end a life. I mean that's like they didn't get a chance to live here, no. and that takes their their mortal probation and it, it lessens it and. It lessens a mortal probation. What the fuck, Melanie? Don't sit there and call yourself a Mormon in good standing and then say bullshit like this. A mortal probation? You know, there are early writings that I can see where that was pulled from, where that term was pulled from. But that's not, I mean, what? I, you don't hear yourself, do you? I don't think you hear yourself. I don't think that you have a filter. I think you just talk. And you know what? Dumb things come out. Dumb things come out. You need to stop. What you just said is one of the most insanely idiotic things I have ever heard. At no point in your rambling were you even close to anything that could be considered a rational thought. Everyone in this room is now dumber. Okay, so now we're going to talk about the staticky part of the audio. Now, I didn't get a lot of it. I just picked up a few things. I guess someone out there has professionally done it and they were able to find out more. There is talk that this conversation became pretty private and they started talking about, you know, in the bedroom. And maybe that is why Sherry was so terrified. During this part, Melanie talks about how she talked to David, who is a visionary man. She says that several times. David tells her her message of repentance is more important than any type of visionary's mission. And then Sherry talks about Melanie's book and how much she loves it. And Melanie eats it up because it's Melanie. And she talks about how she just got all the words from the Lord. He just downloaded it. She's obsessed with this download term. She just typed it while he dictated it to her, apparently. So yeah, she's totally sane compared to Lori. Lori and the angels typing names in and Melanie typing up an entire book that the Lord dictated to her, which by the way, he needs to learn some prose because not the best writing. So leave it to Melanie to blame it on God. So she says that and then she says the book is not written by anybody else but her. I don't think she understands how that works. If the Lord is telling you what to write and you're just typing, you're kind of a scribe, right? And she proceeds to give Sherry this lesson on repentance. You can't have joy if you don't repent. She talks about learning to forgive and you have to learn to forgive. She goes on and on about this for a while, which to me is some subconscious, like shit's going to hit the fan and I still want to retain my fans. Sherry, on the other hand, is like, oh, man, Sherry is a huge fan of Melanie. She encourages Melanie like Melanie encouraged Lori. I know we want to think of Sherry as a hero, but I think she is a normal human being that was looking for something bigger and better. And that's how she found Melanie and her shitty writing, in my opinion. Then she goes on about Jesus and how he heals things and can take all of this away. So accountability, in my opinion. And basically the overall lesson is that you have to repent or you can never have joy. And then she compares herself to Alma, which is kind of funny because earlier in the conversation, she's talking about Lori comparing herself to other Book of Mormon characters, like Lori is crazy. And I think what she's getting at is There were two Almas, Alma the older, or I think he was just Alma, and then Alma the younger, and Alma the younger was kind of a shithead for a while, and then he had a change of heart, and he became super righteous. The ego is kind of up here, in my opinion. She talks about her and David and how their shoulders touched at some preparing a people thing, and fireworks. Then she talks about how her and David have so much in common. They're both missionaries, and they love helping people, but they tend to get a little overzealous and that's a problem. No shit, Sherlock. And the Lord is teaching them. They're learning a lot from each other. And their problem really is that they help people too much. Wow. The bullshit is thick in this room right now. How does she even breathe? The air around her must be so thick with her own ego and self-righteousness. And then she talks about the experience with the group. She thought she was super special, part of the 144,000. Again, that's an annoying thing to me because it makes no sense, but whatever. She talks about how the Lord chastened her and this is all about her learning her mission, which apparently is to teach people about deception. Code for she's gonna write a fucking book probably or the lord's gonna write a book and she's just gonna type it up i think we all need to take a shower 
and get the scuzz off of us and have some cocktails. That's what I'm going to do anyway. And then I'm going to try and purge this from my brain, except I can't because I have to edit it and be grossed out all over again. So, ah, uh, what to, I mean, I just, she did not learn a fucking thing. Not a fucking thing. Good God, that's stupidity. The clear, I mean, the cognitive dissonance, uh, you know what? She she needs to be a subject, a human subject to study. No, she uh, no, uh, no. You can't be like, oh, I don't want to be involved. Oh, that stuff is so bad, and then turn around and be like, oh, well, I that's exactly what I'm still fucking doing. Moron. That's just the way I feel. Just my opinion. I'm gonna have to go brush my teeth and wish I could scrub the inside of my brain and it hurts so much. I am just criticizing actions and behavior. And I, again, do not wish any hate on her. Please, I gotta, I gotta go. I have rum and lots of other things to mix together and delete this from my memory after I edit it. Thank you for visiting me. So we can both go through this together. It means a lot. And uh, I appreciate it. Remember who you are and what you stand for. And hopefully it's not the same bullshit that Melanie does.